Friends, this is a Clock Prophecy update for May 11, 2019. This is part two of our discussion on the fire at Notre Dame Cathedral and the prophetic meaning of its two bell towers. Before I begin, let me wish all the mothers in the audience a happy Mother's Day. I hope you have a wonderful celebratory day in your honor. Let me also point out that today, May 11, is the 77th anniversary to the decree by Israel's first prime minister, David Ben-Gurion, that the gates of Palestine would soon be open to the Jewish people. This was also when the Balfour Declaration was replaced by the Biltmore Platform, making it possible for the Jewish nation to exist as a sovereign state. This is why, I believe, an angel was sent to speak to me audibly about this critical date in modern Jewish history, a date I knew nothing about until that day in the month of May in the year 2008. This is also why I believe we are approaching the end of an 80-year generation that may bring the return of Christ as early as the fall of 2020. Before we look at the amazing properties of the Cathedral of Notre Dame itself, it is important to understand the unusual nature of the fire that recently engulfed it and the evidence that this fire was not man-made. I believe the video linked to the image of Michael Picard shown at the website will make that clear. Based on his comments, the fire is inexplicable in terms of its origin, its speed, and its detection. The wiring had been replaced only a few years earlier, so the chance of an electrical spark has been virtually ruled out. In, a t in addition, the extreme density of the cathedral's timbers make it almost impossible for them to be ignited, ignited without accelerants, none of which were detected. Further, such accelerants would require more time to produce the level of destruction seen in a structure of this kind than what occurred during the nine-hour timeline for this fire. Here are other details we learned from Picard. There was no evidence of arson. There was no evidence of a break-in. Two men provide 24-7 on-site security for the cathedral. The fire had two points of origin. One, the rooftop, and two, the North Bell Tower. Keep these facts, and especially the revelation that the fire had two points of origin, in mind as you listen to the remainder of this message. A few key historical facts will set the stage for the cathedral's pr prophetic role as a warning to the modern church. Let's review that history. Number one, the cathedral was built 856 years ago over the site of Lutetia, a pagan Roman city where the planet Jupiter was worshipped. Number two, the cathedral surface area is listed as 4,800 square meters. Number three, the two towers are 226 feet high and were completed in the year 1250. Number four, the fire occurred on day 28,098 of our final generation. See my book, The Clock of the Fortnight Watches, for an understanding of this topic on the final generation based on Daniel. As many of you know, the clock prophecy is based on the divine mathematical structure of the Bible, as shown in chapters 2 and 3 of my book. A counterpart to this structure is the numbering system found in Strong's Concordance, which I used to assist me in my study of the clock prophecy. The first item in our list refers to the 856 years since the cathedral at Notre Dame was built. The Hebrew word in Strong's numbered 856 is Eth Baal, a proper name that means father of Jezebel. The Greek word in Strong's, numbered 856, is ephedra, which means drought or toilet. We know that Jezebel in the Bible refers to those who bring false teachings to the church and whose doctrinal errors are linked to the pagan rituals and ideas of ancient Rome. 
Note that the cathedral in Paris was built atop a pagan Roman city known for worshiping idols, the very influence Jesus warned against in his letters to the seven churches. Here is what he said. I'm quoting from Revelation chapter 2, verses 21 through 23. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she, meaning the church, repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and then the, them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Jesus addressed this warning to those in the churches, and remembered that Daniel also wrote that many would be purified and made white in the last days. This is a prophecy for God's chastisement of his church, as he states in Revelation chapter 3, verse 19 for the purpose of purifying and redeeming it. In the Old Testament, defilement of the temple was a serious offense that made it unusable. This was sometimes referred to as strange fire, meaning the use of fire not created according to God's instruction or some other violation of priestly duties. When the temple was desecrated, it would later, at some point, be destroyed. By the way, this is how we know that the third and final temple to be used by Christ during his 1,000-year reign will not experience animal sacrifice, as this would pollute the temple and make it unusable. It would have to be destroyed again. While animal sacrifice may take place elsewhere, it cannot take place on the altar of the millennial temple described in the book of Ezekiel. Although desecration of the temple led to its destruction, we see that Notre Dame Cathedral was permitted to survive its test by fire, a sign to us that God will not destroy his body of believers, but rather purify and redeem them. In item two of our list, we see that the total surface area of the structure is said to be 4,800 square meters. That is a very large space. The Hebrew word in Strong's associated with this number is Merkah, which means, quote, large space, large place, or broad and wide expanses. The Greek word in Strong's number 4800 is Sizem, meaning to live together with, as well as to live a new life in union with Christ. These are certainly the ideals that God expects of those who gather in Christ's name, whether they congregate in large buildings like a cathedral or in smaller spaces like a home church. I was amazed to learn that the cathedral in Paris was not a result of one architectural blueprint or one set of coordinated designs. Rather, it was constructed over hundreds of years, which is why one of its bell towers, thought by many to be symmetrical to the other, is actually larger. Institutional Christianity can be divided into two roughly equal halves. Catholicism, which as I have pointed out, embraces the central doctrine of Christ's deity, with about 1.3 billion members worldwide, and Protestantism, a slightly smaller group estimated to be about 1 billion affiliated members worldwide. Look at the two bell towers in the images of the cathedral at the website, and you will notice that one is slightly larger than the other. This is commonly known by cathedral aficionados, and I have verified this fact using several published sources. Oddly, these sources do not publish the actual width of each tower, so using a full frontal view of the structure, I took the known height of the bell towers, 226 feet, to calculate roughly the di difference between them. Again, you can see the result of that comparison and those measurements at the website. Remarkably, the North Tower is slightly larger than the South Tower and was built last, a mirror to the fact that Roman Catholicism arose almost a, mill a millennium after the Lord's death and resurrection. The South Tower, on the other hand, is slightly smaller than the other and was built first, a prophetic match to the birth of the early church, 
at that time free of Rome's religious influence and representing the genesis of Christendom in the first century. Do you recall the words of Jesus that many first shall be last and last first? Matthew 20, verse 16. As noted in item three, the towers were completed in the year 1250. So we want to review this number using the Greek and Hebrew words in Strong's lexicon. The Greek word associated to the number 1250 is diakasioi, which means 200. Do you recall that the height of the towers is 226 feet? Also, the root from which diakasioi is derived, G1364 and G1417, means twice and is the source of our English word duo. Two towers, two fires, and two candle candlesticks representing Christianity. Revelation chapter 11, verse 4. Even the difference in width between the two towers is a witness to the prophetic role of this structure as it demonstrates the unique size of the two candlesticks that stand before the God of the earth in that passage. The recent fire that destroyed Notre Dame's spire and most of its roof brings us to two additional details that I believe you will find equally amazing. The height of the spire is listed by various sources as between 295 and 315 feet, depending on exactly how it is measured. So I am using the number 315 in Strong's to discover what it represents and why God chose to completely destroy it. The Hebrew word associated to the number 315 in Strong's is Akrok, which means, quote, a following brother with an associated meaning of afterward in time or hinder part. This was perplexing to me until I saw the Greek analog, which is the word anikaz, which means to compel by force, threats, entreaties, or by other means. Another clue came when I reviewed the root for this Greek word, which is anak, G318, meaning, quote, to compel by law of duty regarding to one's advantage, custom, or argument, unquote. It was then that I remembered that spires are the architectural feature most commonly associated with Islam. These word associations in the biblical text could not more accurately describe the edicts of the Quran and the nature of Sharia. The spire on the cathedral, I believe, represents the antagonizing relationship of Isaac's brother Ishmael, and thus Islam, to the church, and its later assault through his progeny, the hinder brother, on both Christianity and Judaism. While Islam may be used by God in various ways to bring the church to a state of greater purity, it will also end with the destruction of Islam, and that is why the spire, but not the roof, was completely consumed. Finally, the loss of two-thirds of the roof of the cathedral may hold prophetic meaning for the fate of humanity as a whole. That discussion is available by reading this message at the website, which I invite you to visit for the remainder of this message. In closing, I believe the evidence that the fire at Notre Dame Cathedral was divinely orchestrated is overwhelming. It was my purpose in this message to help you understand how the church will be purified in the days to come before it is redeemed and that our redemption is indeed drawing near. God bless as you continue to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Behold, I come quickly. This is Peter John Brandle.